Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to continue looking at transfer learning, but this time we're going to apply it to natural language processing. We're going to see how we can bring in weight embeddings from pre-trained neural networks to learn how to do sentiment analysis to determine if movie reviews are positive or negative in the language that they are using. So the link to this Jupyter Notebook is in the description. I'm going to go ahead and open it in Colab, Google Colab, just so that I can run the code. I'll run this first part, not really necessary, but this just tells TensorFlow that we're using 2.3. Actually, it tells Colab that we're using 2.x. So now we're going to use transfer learning with natural language processing. We're going to do an example that makes use of word embeddings, which are weights that are transferred in, together with the Internet Movie Database movie review that tells us if a review is positive or negative and the text that goes along with it. So the natural language processing from this class is going to learn to do sentiment analysis. You'll want to run this to install TensorFlow Hub. That is provided by TensorFlow, and it gives you a, quite a few different neural networks that you can download for transfer learning. We're going to install the TensorFlow data sets so that we can get access to the, the Internet Movie Database reviews. So here we load the database from the Internet Kira's data set. You can see it all basically being loaded there. That takes a moment. That's why I'm kind of skipping those parts where we're actually running it. This is where we're doing the transfer learning. We're going to use embeddings. Now what these embeddings are is words, textual words like you speak English with, like this neural network was trained. What the embeddings will do is they will take each of these words and they will convert those words into a vector. Could be 32 numbers, it could be 100, whatever that is. It was a neural network that was trained by a third party to basically take those words and map them to high dimension space so that similar words are closer to each other according to those vectors. We can print out some examples of what the movie reviews were like. This is an absolutely terrible movie. This is an absolutely terrible movie. Yeah, don't don't sugarcoat it. So on these movie reviews, what you are able to do is there is a label that is giving you a zero or a one to let you know if it's a positive or negative review, which was gleaned by the number of stars that the user actually gave it. And then we've got the text for each of those. So this lets us go in and be able to have training data on these texts that let us know with a label if it was positive or if it was negative. And these are what the vectors look like. So you can see that this particular network that we transferred in, there are vectors of 20 numbers for each of the words that we actually have. Now, not every word is going to be able to be looked up in this dictionary. Those words are just dropped from the analysis. We're also using just straight vectors to put these in, so there's no n-grams or anything else going, going on here. This is where sometimes you'll want to use, or often you'll want to use, LSTM-type neural networks or transformers because then word order mean, means everything. Is that could be important. Like if you had, if you said, it sucks that I didn't see this movie earlier in my life, it was awesome, versus it sucks that I saw this movie earlier in my life. I, it's, it's a word order, very important. So then we put on some additional layers just so that we have 16 hidden neurons that are helping us to classify the sentiment. And then we have a final output neuron and it's going to be sigmoidal. So this is a binary classification neural network. We're now ready to compile the neural network. We're gonna take the first 10,000 movie reviews as our training set, and then we're going to take the next 10,000 or 10,000 to, to the end as our validation set. So we're going to take the first 10,000 and then the remaining, that separates our validation and our training set. Now we fit the neural network. 
We are using validation, but we're not using early stopping. I'm actually doing this on purpose. You'll see why in a moment. We're training for 40 epochs, irregardless of what happens with the training set, irregardless of what happens with the validation set. So train, train, train. And notice we extracted the history. We don't do this a lot in some of the previous neural networks that I've showed you in this course, but we have the training history now, and we can look at the benefits of early stopping. So here I am going to use matplotlib to display the, the training. So you can see the training loss was very, very high at first, and then the validation loss tracked pretty close with it. But then at a certain point, notice that the validation loss plateaus and stays about the same, and then starts to go up. This is overfitting in action, whereas the training loss just keeps getting progressively better and better and better. This is why you don't just train forever because you're going to, you're going to keep getting some sort of incremental improvement as the neural network starts to memorize or overfit to the data set. This is loss, so things are decreasing as we get better. Accuracy, things are increasing as we get better, but you see the same story. Training, it gets better, better, better at accuracy. You eventually push it, push it close to 100% accuracy. On the validation side, you're, you're plateauing and you just don't see as good of results. You reach the point of diminishing returns. Now let's throw early stopping in and see what happens. I put in early stopping just like we've seen earlier in this course. This is exactly a copy and paste from earlier in the course. Now we're going to use that validation data but we're going to train up to 40 epochs and we'll stop as soon as we don't see an input. We'll stop as soon as we don't see a improvement for whatever we specified the patients as, which was five. So five epochs with no improvement and it'll stop. So notice we train, train, train. We continue training. We do not make it to 40. We abort early. And if you look at it, you can see it didn't go as far. It didn't give it a chance to completely plateau and start to get worse again. This is looking at the loss. And then finally, we calculate the final accuracy of the best neural network. So it took the neural network at the point that the validation was the best. So never just do your epochs out to infinity. Well, for one, you don't have the compute power to do that. Nobody does but also use something like early stopping, use something to stop you before you start to overfit. And also use other means to prevent the overfitting like dropout layers and other things that, that will help with regularization. Thank you for watching this video. And if you want to see the other videos related to transfer learning and Kira's, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you do not miss anything. And if this video was, like, was helpful to you, please give me a like. Thank you very much.